Hi, my name is Don Bowman with Agilicus, where we make any application available to any user on any device, simply and securely. And today I thought I would share with you one of the tools we use to do that. And it's called DNS CAA, Certificate Authority Authorization. It's a complex name. It's very simple, I promise. This is something you could get done before you go home for the day. And it will improve your security, and it will cost you nothing, and it's not going to have any risk. Too simple? Let's talk about it. So what is this CAA thing? How does it relate to TLS certificates? And why do I want it? Well, it's a standard, RFC 8659 from the good folks at the IETF. And in a nutshell, you add a record to your DNS, and it indicates who you use for your certificates. I use Let's Encrypt, so I have a record that says for my domains, it can only be issued by Let's Encrypt. And if you use another certificate authority, if another certificate authority is breached, it's not going to issue for you. So if somebody gets a hold of, I don't know, Komodo, and they try to issue a certificate and you have one of these records, it won't issue. So you're protected. So it's simple to implement. It adds some security, and it's no risk. Sign me up. What do I do? So first, let's talk about why. What was the motivation behind this uh, standard? So mistakes and breaches in certificate authorities happened. You know, for the last couple decades, every once in a while, human error, cybersecurity breaches, things happened. And you don't want bad things happening to you if you can prevent it. Certificate transparency came out to sort of help with that problem. And there's these logs. Logs are generated. Every certificate is issued. There's a record that comes out, and you can at least go back and see it. And that's a, you know, influence on the bad folks to not try to snoop around and issue something bad for your domain. Then HTTP public key pinning, it kind of happened. I mean, this turned out to be complicated to use, and the browsers are withdrawing support for it. But the key here is it was in the client, and it was after the effect. So if a CA authority, a certificate authority, was compromised and they issued a certificate for your domain in error, if you'd done HTTP public key pinning, the browsers should have ignored it. About that time, another standard came out called Dane. This is also from the good folks at the uh, IETF. And again, it's on the client side. So this is to instruct the client that this certificate, it, it's not for me. I know it seems valid, but you know, don't trust it. And uh, what also happened about this time is we created the CAA record, and that was to prevent misissuance. So it's before the issuing happens. So somebody gets a hold of one of the certificate authorities, they type in my domain, they say, hey, I'm Don, I'm Agilicus, give me some sweet certificates. Certificate authority says, wait a minute, there's a CAA record, I cannot issue that for you, denied. So it's a very, very simple seatbelt. So how does it work? Well, it's hierarchical. So here's an example. There's the root. The root has something called CA. All the two-letter domains are country code TLDs, CC TLDs. Underneath that, there's a domain here. In this case, it's example.ca. And then imagine sort of two trees, foo.example.ca and bar.example.ca. Here I'm showing three hypothetical DNS records. The first, for example.ca, says I will only issue from certificate authority A. What that means is, until told otherwise later in the chain, the certificate authority had better be CA-A. In my case, it's Let's Encrypt. But if I go down the other side of it, I say, well, foo.example.ca is more specific, and that one I've allowed CAB to issue. This means that CAA cannot issue, and CAB can. You also see that I have a more specific one here called CAX for a.foo.example.ca, and in this one, Similarly, B and A cannot issue, only X can issue. So why should I use CAA? The simple answer is, why not? It's going to take you one minute to go into your DNS, add this record, and that way you won't have maybe somebody that works for you accidentally not really understand your security policy and create a wildcard certificate. And that's good for a year, and it can masquerade your entire domain. It means if there's a breach in the CA, you're likely somewhat protected from it. Is it perfect? No, absolutely not. Does it mean you can sleep well at night and say, I did this so I can you know, get rid of all the rest of my security? 
No, 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 no. But what we're talking about here is a minute of work for zero cost with zero downside that someday could save your bacon. Absolutely, I think you want to do that. So head on over to your DNS, add that CAA record, and rejoice. Thanks very much. Uh, comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. Have you enabled CAA? Do you want to know if you've got it enabled? I highly recommend the Mozilla Observatory, observatory.mozilla.org. It's a really fantastic tool. Just go there, type in your host name, your domain name. It'll give you a quick snapshot as to your security. Anyway, thanks very much, and bye-bye.